Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road, and in this video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than I usually do. I'm getting ready to start a new series. It's much more instructional than it is tutorial, and it has to do with scrapbooking. And I want to talk about things in this series that will make your scrapbook layouts better. And I really thought that the best way to do that is to start with what I learned throughout the years of how I made my own pages better. So this is the preview episode, I guess, quote unquote episode. Um, so I hope that you will subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and to tune into the series so that you can uh, come along this journey with me. Um, I've realized that when you're doing scrapbooking, really the pages that you think are your best pages um, are, of course, your own opinion and the opinion of others, you know, but your opinion is the one that matters most. And probably you think pages are better than others based on the structure, four things, the structure of the page itself, um, which I'll talk about the color choices, either with photos or without the photos, your titles, and your journaling. And all those things put together um, make up scrapbook pages that um, if they're done in a way that pleases you, then that's a good page to you. But sometimes, don't you ever look at some of your layouts and go, what does it need? Or what's wrong with it? Or it needs something and I don't know what. Um, and this could be whether you're a new scrapbooker or you've been doing it for years. So, um, rather than using other people's pages as examples, definitely I thought I'd use my own. I cannot believe I'm about to do this. Um, and I hope that the glare isn't going to uh, be a problem. I'm going to give this a try and then in the editing, if the glare is a problem, what I'm going to do is... Uh, substitute pictures of the pages in um, over top. You'll see what I mean, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to show you every single thing in here, um, but I did mark several with post-its to make my point. So uh, here we go. So the first one I want to show you, see, I can already tell this glare is going to be a problem, but I'll try to tip it up. There, that should help some. Oh my goodness. This is um, the double page spread that I made for my high school graduation. Now, mind you, I didn't make this the year I graduated. I didn't start scrapbooking till maybe uh, 90, uh, 97, okay? Um, but even so, that's been a while back. So I just want to point out that I don't hate these pages. I mean, they're fine. I'm not going to redo them or anything, but just the kind of scrapbooker that I am now, years later, I would never have just floated so much randomness, just floated. Nothing, nothing is grounded. And that goes back to the structure. Um, this is, and I get this is more like a sign and you know how cute that I cut out the pictures to spell with the letters that took forever. Um, but why did do we why do we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mortarboards floating on the page? Why? Why? This was a cute idea, I thought. It you know, all those pictures of, of the graduate look at the feet. Of the graduates in the crowd. And I cut them to make the border. But can I ask myself why I didn't use some type of either decide to make it perfectly straight or decide to make it messy like like not straight. All these floating elements. There needs to be a sense of grounding. And does everybody not have a picture of the diploma of whatever graduation page you're doing? 
a picture of the diploma, and I could think of a thousand million other things to do other than just stick it like this on the corner of a page. And what's with the, you're gonna see, this is so funny, because as I was going through some pages getting ready for this layout, or getting ready for this layout, getting ready for this video, I see, like, why am I doing this with all my, it's, I don't know why I do that. I don't know why I do that. Um, I don't know why I do that. Because here, clearly, they're straight, and yeah, maybe I'm trying to add interest, but I don't know. I don't know. So to me, if I was doing this page now, based on the way I scrapbook now, I would definitely include something to ground the page, maybe a square of a piece of something underneath all these pictures. Um, maybe I would decide whether I'm gonna cock them all one way or keep them straight. Maybe I would not do this. Although it's kind of clever and, you know, um, but I don't know that I would do that today. I don't know that I would leave a big blob of glue right there. I just, I think if I was going to do something like this, I wouldn't be so sloppy with it, first of all. And second of all, I don't think I would put it directly on the page. I would probably put it on white and then mount them on the page if I was going to do something like that. Certainly this I would put on its own frame to make it look like it was in the frame, not cock out these corners like that. So, yeah, that's the kind of thing. I do like my little bit of journaling, but it is a little, it's just a little bit random. All right, doing all right so far? <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Did you ever go back to your own <laughs> layouts? Okay. When I first turned to this page <laughs> after today, while I was going through this, I thought to myself, what, what on earth was I trying to accomplish? What, I can't believe I made this. I know that a thousand of you will probably leave comments saying, it's fine, all your art is beautiful, every, every art piece of art is beautiful in your own mind. I agree with all of those things, but you know as well as anybody else, it's, it's no different than looking back at the clothes you wore, you know, 20 years ago and being like, why in the world would I wear that? Or looking back at a hairstyle you had 20 years ago and be like, oh my goodness, what in the world? And so that's what I feel like is happening here. Um, this is my friend's pet rabbit who... Uh, when we were in college, there were three of us living in one dorm room, and one of our friends in the dorm room decided to get a rabbit, which you were not allowed to do, but um, the rabbit created all kinds of havoc in the room. But I just want to say this. Why? Why the die-cut rabbit? Did we not know from the pictures that this page was about a rabbit? That, to me, that it comes back to communication and placement and audience who would not know in these pictures that we're speaking about a rabbit i just don't know that this um is necessary the way that it is not saying they don't need to be there but they look at how i tried to cut a carrot shape with i just now saw what i was trying to do I used my shape scissors and tried to create a carrot with shape scissors. I don't understand this shape. Not understanding the color choices. Oh, yes, I do. These little tiny dots that are on this paper, you can't see it from there. The little tiny dots. I went in and tried to pull out one piece of solid paper that com matched perfectly with these other um, dots. <sighs> Yikes. I guess, <laughs> I guess we're looking at several things. If I was redoing this page, I would do it. It wouldn't even look like the same page. I would never cut these pictures out in these shapes. I would come up with some sort of continuity, some sort of grounding. This page has no border, no beginning, middle, or end. It's just, it just, it looks like I just took a bunch of, remember jacks that you would play with? Uh, just a bunch of jacks or a pile of something and just threw it out on the table. 
Um, so yeah, definitely we're looking at color. I'm looking at um, the communication that the page gives off. I'm looking at the journaling for the audience. Audience meaning I'm the one that's looking at it. And down the line, um, I don't know. I It doesn't tell a great story. So that being said, I would definitely do this page differently today than I would back then. Oh my goodness. Here is another page from this same album that I found. I have an acrylic block under here to hold this up just a little bit so you don't get a glare. This is the page I made about, you guessed it, my first car. Now, if I was, <laughs> it's, it's almost laughable. It's, it's not a bad page. I like that the pictures are featured. You know, when we st first started scrapbooking, folks who are with me decades old into the craft, do you remember we used to cut all this stuff out and how many pictures we now have no idea what was in the background, what was in the, remember we used to do that with everything you'll see as I, as I go through, this is, was trendy at the time, but again, why, why the floating? I can think of a thousand other ways to use stickers on this very page without doing it all mishmashy like that the map now see i started to get that idea of it needs something but i don't know what and so i started to experiment with ways to put pattern paper in the background i remember i remember making this layout and i had started with the whole piece of pattern paper and it just as the background and it just looked like so much because then i had all this other stuff i wanted to include which now i mean you look at it isn't really necessary still not sure why i was relying on those shape scissors to cut the edge of my road. Um, hmm. I mean, this is a cute idea, but it's just, do you know any roads that do that? I don't know. This is a, I think I would do this again today. It maybe not this way and maybe not with this font or whatever my handwriting, but that was cute putting that in there and that there. And I made that, you know, just with some cardstock, but I guess we're looking at some, um, some balance here. Uh, some, yeah, some some balance with these with these stickers and this placement and um maybe some I guess maybe just some style. Are we going to have sort of a page that showcases the main photo or are we going to have sort of a scenery page that showcases like a scene in action? There's a lot just going on and it looks like I can't make up my mind. But I mean, that's not to say it's not a good page. It's just that knowing what I know now, I would probably do this different today if I was scrapping these pictures. Okay, and here we go. Here's another page from this album. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way so you can see better. My heat gun and stuff that's on my desk. This is um, my best friend, April. When we were in college, and I remember making this page, I love the pictures. We were roommates all through school, and um, it's cute. It's like a little, it reminds me of those school years windows where you'd see the people change, or, you know, all throughout the school years and stuff. And, you know, this is cute and all that, and then the matching paper and the matching color and stuff. Again, I just think I would do this different, not sure about this whole... I guess I just don't know this. I don't even say her name on the page. I do not even say her name, not one time on the page. And I have the years, freshman, sophomore, junior, but do you know what years those were? Thank goodness you don't. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I could have put them in here. I could have put where we went to school. I could have put, this is an issue of journaling audience communication and um i'm gonna say just some style because even though i started to get i started to get um consistent here with see how i did the corner rounder and we've got two rectangles here and i got them the same size but here we're not so i don't know we're getting there i think but um there's still a lot of things that could be improved to make this a, a much better page than than it is 
This is the next page over from that other page we just did. This is my grandma. I love my grandma. I love my grandma so much. And here I have this page that says grandma's house. And I remember making this page. I loved this pattern paper, this flowered pattern paper so much. But again, it was too much to be the whole background. And I thought, well, maybe I could just put one square, like smaller than the 12 by 12. Well, and actually these are like, different pages there this is like not even a creative memories album but it's mimicking the album so it has this funny lip on the edge so it's not even quite a 12 by 12 but i thought at least if i could have something that shows off the pattern paper it doesn't have to be the whole back and that's where i started i think this was the first time i started to do a square for grounding and i just that's i think the thing i wanted to show that was something good that i started to do um even at that time that people weren't doing that very often, just putting one square of a pattern paper down that was smaller. I remember, I say people weren't doing it, I'm talking about people that I sat with at Crofts, <laughs> not people in the world. <laughs> um, but yeah, they people would tell me that it was such an amazing idea and I thought it's really not an idea at all, it's just putting the same paper down you're using. Um, but I still, here's my issue. You know, I put grandma up in the focal point, which is always like, if you imagine your page is in like quadrants, your eye generally goes to this top right quadrant. All right, let's turn the page to the next one I have marked. Oh yes, oh yes. Now, <laughs> oh my goodness. So, you might have pages that look similar to this. You know, let me just say this. I, I'm not sure if you can tell from the way I laid this out, but I actually went to Disney two different times in my life. One is when I was eight, and one is when I was 16. And so, uh, I'm not too sure why these are all the pictures that I have from it, but I know that that is. I can't believe I don't have more pictures from this time, though. Well, anyway... Um, I could, why would I do this? I, look at that. Do you know what I did? I took red cardstock and I took a basic hole punch and I punched out enough dots to make a border, but then stopped right here. Oh, and I remember why I was doing that because there were white dots here and white dots here and and dots and so I was trying to just stick with the theme of the dots it's a little bit much I think clearly clearly I had these are sticker borders now see here's why this this is the first thing that I see is that well maybe that helps separate the time because I was gonna say it looks like it should be one continuous spread but it's separate so maybe that does maybe that is good I know I'm talking a little bit randomly. This is a little bit better. Again with the cutout. Again with the cutout. Although this one, I, apparently I just stopped right there at, at the shoulder. <laughs> and at the top of the head. I like the idea of the journaling in these die cuts. And I drew that. I remember that. Oh my. Here's a picture of a ride that neither none of us are on. I'm not sure why that has to be in the scrapbook. Maybe I was trying to fill. Maybe I was trying to fill space. Fill space because I didn't have enough pictures. But then why wouldn't I just do journaling? You see what I'm saying? So we've got a little bit of nothing on this page. Well, no, this is a little bit better than it was because at least these are grounded. This is more of what I mean by grounded. They're not just. These two, look at the difference between here and this, where's the graduation one? And here, see how they're just floating? And at least here, they're grounded to something, you know? Um, same thing, this is floating, and here at least I'm grounded to the bottom of the page, but then we've got floating here. I don't know why she's here. I, I don't, I probably just thought she was cute and she was wearing the ears. Oh my. Okay. So yeah, definitely I can see some of my own improvement. Um, some cute things. I do not like this at all. 
this is a struggle. And look how I did dots over all of every single letter. Why? Why? Oh, because the dots. Oh, man. Well, it's distracting to read. So definitely the, I would redo the journaling if I was doing it different. I just might put a little bit more intention around the whole page itself. Definitely, I mean, maybe not a square or something, but even if I have, look, look at the difference if there was a light gray, very light gray square of cardstock with, um, maybe I'd trim these down and do something different with them and not use them as just like parallel bars here or something. But yeah, I'd work a little bit better with the grounding on this one. Um, a little bit better with the placement here. The color I think is fine. I like how the green go. Look how I did that. I probably did see how the, the color, the yellow. That's pretty good. It's not a horrible page. I just, it looks like it's a little empty and a little full, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Let's see what else I've got marked off for you to see. Where's my... Didn't get permission from every single person in my album <laughs> to show these pages, so we're just going to stick with, with some. This... <laughs> oh... Oh, my... I'm going to talk here for a minute about the titles. Very similar to the rabbit page that I showed earlier. Who looking at this page would not know that this page is about rides? Who? I did not need to state the obvious. Um, what could I have put instead, you might be thinking? I don't know. Um, maybe something that leads me to go read more of the journaling not something that states the obvious in the pictures. Like, for example, um, in the journaling, which is so small, I obviously my eyes were better back then. Um, maybe I might put family tradition. Um, I might put, um, I, don't, I don't know, but I wouldn't put rides, rides, rides. I, I just wouldn't. I could almost see maybe like, man, I would. There are so many Cedar Point pictures that we have. I I know the other ones that I have that are not on this page. That's a funny picture. <laughs> I would always try to find the camera on the roller coaster and give it a thumbs up when we passed it on the way down the hill. I combined a lot of different years. Um, maybe this was just meant to be like a feature page. But see, then why didn't I? Why didn't I do it better? And why? Why did I cut this out? See, I still think to myself, I'm cocking these photos this way. We're overdoing these um, shape scissors. Just overdoing it. And yet again, I must have had a bunch of these border stickers. I was really on a border sticker thing. I like that. The circle cut out. I like how everybody's going that way and then I turn around and I put the year there. That's cute. Then why didn't I do them all circles? See, because I could have done circles. I I didn't even need necessarily a title except maybe one in like a, ooh, in like a vellum font or something across here. And I could add circle pictures like this all the way through. Just circles. I could have made circles, circle. This one would have been good not here. I don't know maybe not here but even so a circle a circle circle I didn't need to keep this here I'm sure I have cedar point on something else like a like a, a map or something I could have put a circle of that a circle of all this journaling that's hard to read you know something like that okay here's another this is a few pages later in the book now I I was excited actually when I saw this page. Couldn't wait to show this one because I know that if you are a scrapbooker, you have for sure positive scrapbooked beach pages, pool pages, bath pages for your young children. Just any, you have done something like this when it comes to water. Maybe not this, 
but we've thought about the water pages, the beach pages, all of that. And I just don't know. I just think that there are maybe more effective ways to use water pattern paper than this. And I remember making this page and I, I couldn't think beyond the, the paper was perfect for SeaWorld. Um, I feel like I've had a floating relapse, although, you know, maybe appropriate for the water. That was a joke, but I mean, we've got a lot going on with the shapes of the pictures, not consistent, a floating title. We've got to, why, why am I doing that? It's actually a little bit distracting. I also see that I cannot cut straight and did not bother to fix it. Wow, goodness. Oh, do you know what? Do you know what? I'm gonna take that back because these are the days before die cuts. These are also the days before die cutting machines. You would have to go to a scrapbook store. This is back in the day, back in the day, right? And, you know, sign up for a crop or take a class or something like that and get the privilege then of using their big, big, big die cutting machine that was like enormous with this huge, huge crank and these big, thick dies. And um, so if you didn't have that at home, you would have what we now call stencils, right? the acetate sheet with shapes cut out of them. And you would literally trace around your pictures with a pencil or pen and physically cut them out with scissors. Um, and then like the good stencils had like um, one and then another one that fit. Well, then I remember Creative Memories came out with an oval cutter and a circle cutter. So yeah, I'm going to forgive myself. Oh, did I write that? I just now saw it totally hidden. This is Greg Luganis. I remember when he came to SeaWorld. And I put his name all wonky down there. Just, I wouldn't have even seen it if I wouldn't have been pointing to the circle shape. Hmm. Interesting. Again, we had a title uh, stencil. And I find that a little bit distracting. Definitely, definitely we would work on, if I was doing this page again of my own stuff, I would choose something consistent shape-wise for my pictures. I would definitely choose, that would be the structure, right? I would definitely choose some sort of consistent proportioning. We've got all kinds of different big and small, look at just small floating. We've got some style problems. We've got some placement problems. Um, we've got some grounding problems, some balance problems. So there's a, a lot of problems. Of course, you may look at this and say, wow, it's a great page. And I think to myself, honestly, when I look at this, that's the secondary stuff I see is all that stuff I listed. The first thing I see is, you know, me and my brother when we were younger, um, this, that I look at the pictures, but then secondary, I see, oh my goodness, I've really changed my style a lot since I very first started scrapbooking. Okay, next. I only have really two more that I want to show you. Um, this one, look what, look what has started to happen. I don't think I did this album chronologically, like, you know, but I think that I was working through the album, um, in page order like first I did this page then I did this page and then I did and just decided I think I think that is what I did because I can see my style changing a little bit as the album goes through for example we've got a consistent size here of each photo we've got a consistent matting of each photo pattern paper use look and I I consistently, I went around the per, whole perimeter instead of just using these border things. This, I so remember cutting this title. Mind you, this was before the cricket. This was before the slice. This was before any of those, any, uh, any of that stuff, okay? And I had letter stickers that I was using, but I was out of, I wanted to make my title say Lazy Sunday. And I actually like I actually like this page, honestly. 
not sure why the color choices though I'm gonna talk about that in a minute but I like the simple journaling I like that I've got the date um, I could have definitely included my best friend's name yet again not sure why I'm not putting her name in there um, I like the way the 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 feel of the pictures matches you know the title um, I like that the title isn't obvious with I didn't just say college or something you know um, but I do want to say this is that I had these letter stickers and I wanted to use the font but I didn't have enough stickers and I certainly didn't have a color that matched what I was trying to do here whatever it was I was trying to do with this Easter paper on this page I'm not sure and so I remember that how did I do that I think somehow I traced inside the negative space backwards I think I must have held it up to a window or something and against this pattern paper and then cut out the each letter with scissors and when I put it down it must have looked too plain for some reason I took a brown marker pen and traced around it silly 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 Aaron but I you know I remember that took a lot a lot of work I even did inside the A and the and the A here and the D. Yeah, that's pattern paper. That's I wonder what adhesive I used. Mm. But anyhow, not sure about this color. And that is something else. That that is something else. It's a serious issue. Color with photos or without photos. Now when you think about the Disney page, that matched. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to be always too matchy matchy, but this clearly what if these pictures weren't here? I mean, honestly, what if these pictures were not here? Would you envision this type of picture here? I, I mean, I wouldn't. Also, there's absolutely no embellishments other than these. So I have, there is no communication um, or there's like no communication with the title coordinating with the photos, without the photos, with the color, with, with the audience. There's nothing matches with itself um, it's all just seemingly independent I not saying that very well and maybe when I get more into the series um, uh, it'll be easier for me to communicate but this this really captures what I meant by what what I'm going to explain by color with photos or without photos um, yeah Lots, lots more to talk about. Okay, and this is the last page that I'm going to showcase today. It's also the last page in my album, although I have this random page in here for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, and we are back to the good old favorites. Now, I, I also just want to clarify, there's nothing wrong with scrapbooking this way. Um... I'm in a few scrapbooking groups like on Facebook and stuff and I see I see pages that look like this all the time especially I mean there's nothing wrong with it there is nothing wrong with it this is not a condemnation station I am definitely not trying to you know put down anybody's style or put I, I'm not trying to do any of that I'm really just I've I personally learned a lot about this craft through my own personal journey and I really just wanted to share with you the things that I learned about things that I consider second nature about scrapbooking now that I did not consider then for example you could see the same exact um, font that I used cutting out the letters remember I told you in the, just this last page that I had shown you um, but this title, if I was not me right now, like showing it to the public, this page, I think is probably the best thing I could have ever done to prove a point. This does absolutely nothing for you as an audience to tell you what is going on in this page, what these pictures are about. And granted, part of scrapbooking is for yourself, but I'm thinking of like, what about my grandchildren and great grandchildren? You know, my children right now still spend time with my grandma. And so as a great grandchild, what do they look at of hers and not know anything about it? They would, I'm sure, appreciate 
knowing what this meant to me being down in the valley do they are they going to know that that's me and my dad and my brother right here in this tiny tiny picture with these big trees where is this valley why was it special when was this there's literally there is no journaling whatsoever the title does nothing to communicate to the audience anything about the pictures the mood the style nothing the time nothing the color i think coordinates with the pictures and i love that i didn't just i i'm sure i did this accidentally because i'm sure this was the size of the paper but i like that i didn't try to do it like an extended out full way and then use the white space here for a title that's i i think that's nice um, but then you've got some floating elements in here like that. And I just think how much more simple could I keep this the way it is and add just one band of another piece of pattern paper right in the middle, um, right here in the top. Why would I do it this way? Why in the world would I put my pictures this way instead of not this way? Because my eye is is like automatically going to go over here. So why wouldn't I just, just put them this way? Um, I'm not sure about these shape scissors, you know, trimming the picture and the second mat and the third mat. Just why? I don't know why. Why, why, why? Lots of different things that I would do differently if I was making this page today. And hopefully that's what you will also get out of this upcoming series. Um, so if you're not shy about um, sharing some of your layouts, um, that you would like to have featured in a video, you can certainly uh, send them to send. You can certainly post them um, to your own Facebook or Instagram pages um, and just tag Sandpaper Road, all one word, at Sandpaper Road. Just tag me and, you know, let me know in a, in a comment, either with that picture or something like that, that you uh, are willing to have that photo featured in this series. And I'll, I'll use a photo of it, obviously not the, the actual layout, but I'll use that and just kind of use it as a sample to talk about. Now, clearly, we're going to appreciate more if we see the pictures. I would really like to focus on a different thing in four different videos, structure, in one video, color in another, titles in another, and journaling in another. And, um, you know, I'll spell that out maybe a little bit clearer on Facebook or Instagram, something like that. Give you a place maybe where you can post. Maybe I'll do that. So um, I will leave those links below to all the things that I'm rattling about and thinking about off the top of my head. I really hope that you enjoyed this little walk through uh, my scrapbook goodness sakes I don't do that very often vlog like that and I think a vlog is um more of where you see your face but I'm shy so yeah you, we're not going to do that but anyway I really appreciate all of your um uh all of my subscribers thank you so much for commenting and participating and um just really hope that this is a series that you can get something out of and improve your scrapbooking along the way it's really 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 fun to do some scrapbooking sit with your friends get some memories preserved get some albums done i would love to see some of you uh, veteran scrapbookers share some of your first pages as well. So if you're not too shy, um, feel free to uh, send me an email or drop a comment or tag Sandpaper Road in a picture that you've posted or something like that. Seriously, I would love that. Um, it would be a great, great time. And give me permission, please, if you would like to, for me to use it in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And um, hope you stay tuned for the rest of the series. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.